Hello, today we're going to run through the 11 ways that a batsman can be out. The first of these is to be caught. This is where from a delivery the ball hits the bat and goes to a fielder's hand and the fielder catches the ball before the ball strikes the ground. Now if the ball should hit the bat and then hit part of the batsman, either his foot, his pad, uh, of his body, the fielder can still catch the ball and it's a fair catch and the batsman is out. There's bold, which is fairly self-explanatory. The ball hits the stumps, either without touching anything or off the batsman's legs or off the bat, uh, it break, but it must break the bales. Sometimes, if the batsman's look is in, the ball can just brush the stumps and the bales stay on the stumps. In this case, the batsman is not out. Then there's to be stumped. Here, the umpire should check that the wicket keeper has either gathered or the ball has deflected from the wicket keeper from behind the stumps. The stumps are then broken while the batsman is out of his ground. To be in his ground, the batsman needs a part of his body or his bat behind the line of the crease. There's hit wicket, where the batsman either stands on his own stumps or in the process of playing a shot, hits the stumps with his bat, breaks the bales. There's to be run out, where the batsman attempt to be run and the ball successfully breaks the wickets, either directly or with the aid of another fielder who's caught the ball cleanly to break the stumps before the batsman makes his ground. Again, the bat or a part of the batsman must be behind the crease. There's to be timed out, not often seen in test match, it's three minutes between the time of the last batsman being out, the next batsman must be at his crease. Handle the ball, I have actually given this out once, and this is where a batsman deliberately uses his hand to interfere with the ball typically to stop the ball hitting his wicket. The batsman is allowed to use his foot or his bat, but not his hand. There's obstructing the field. Uh, this can happen, say, in a run-out situation. The batsman is entitled to run a straight line. He's not entitled to look at the fielder, alter his line and try and interfere with the flight of the ball or with another fielder trying to get to the stumps before him. Uh, it can be a judgment call by the umpire, um, but it is one to be aware of. Then, number nine is to hit the ball twice. You are not allowed to stop the ball with your bat, flick it up in the air and then smash it for six. Equally, should you want to, you're not allowed to stop it with your foot or your pads, try and deflect it into the air and hit it again like so. And finally, there's LBW. This is where the umpire judges that the ball has hit the batsman, typically on the pads, but can be any part of his body, and would have went on to hit the stumps. Now there is a couple of provisos in that. If the ball pitches outside the line of the leg, there is no delivery or way that the batsman can be out. This is typically seen by somebody bowling right arm round, ball pit or even left arm over. The ball pitches outside leg, it is going on to miss the, hit the stumps, but because the ball is actually pitched outside the line of the leg stump, can't be out. The other situation is if the batsman gets this pad so far forward and across that the point of the impact with the pad is outside the line of the off stump then again, this is not out, even if the ball is hitting the wickets. Uh, this is more likely if the batsman gets one or two big strides down the wicket, or he really gets his leg across. Uh, it can be difficult, there's no white lines painted down the pitch, so the umpire needs to make uh, his own mind up. Final method to be out is one that you decide yourself. If you're fortunate enough, you've scored 170, and you decide it's time to let your fellow batsman have a turn, then you can retire yourself out. Should note that if you retire yourself out, you cannot come back in, unlike an injury retirement. Okay, thank you for listening.